Good morning everyone, I'm Nicole and welcome to Management 101, a show so boring you'll wish you were at your university lecture. Today we have two very special guests with me to tackle life's biggest mystery, how to properly manage your team in a project. Please welcome Sophia and Celeste. So what's in your tool bag? How do you guys keep everything under some control? What we like to do is break it down into five categories, forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning. Let's start it off with forming. Every category is equally important when it comes to solid team management. However, I think forming is where the foundations are built. Without nailing the forming stage, you would be surprised at how quickly everything can go topsy-turvy. I agree, forming is essentially the strategy planning stage. A good way to start is to do analysis of the company as a whole to figure where there are areas of a strength and where you might be lacking. There is where you'll address the issue early on so you can overcome challenges. It's called a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Let's take a look at an oven example of how it can be used effectively. Hey guys, so now that we're here to form our management handbook group, I think we could talk about our strengths and weaknesses to get to know each other better. So how about we start with you? Uh, yeah, uh, for this, but the board formatting is too hard to do. That's fine. I'm sure we can work around it. What about you? Yeah, I'm good at the uh, researching definitions and not good at referencing. That's fine. I know how to reference. What about you? I'm good at referencing. But I'm not very good with presentations. When it comes to the planning stage, it's crucial to define the goals on this project. And more importantly, just exactly how you set out to achieve these goals with what available resources you have. Without it, your team members will be lost without a clear path. Let's take a look at some examples. Have we got goals for this assignment? Uh, well, of course we have to set them, so I figured we could all talk about what kind of grade we want. HD. HD? Yeah. I'd be happy with it. Okay. Well, I reckon that maybe we should all work to get a distinction, so that's another idea, right, guys. Another way to make sure your team members have a clear path is with having clear leadership. Having effective leadership means that there is a party who is responsible for motivating and developing the team. We expect good leadership to drive for results but also have flexible and adaptable. If you're really lucky or hire the right person, You'll get someone, as we like to say, who has authentic leadership. If someone who can empower people after becoming self-aware enough that people around them are inspired with their openness and authenticity. These are the kinds of people you would want as your project managers. This role is responsible for coordinating the team members from a range of departments, delegating tasks and setting deadlines. Let's see a good example of project managers. I thought we could go over the criteria and start delegating roles because we need about uh, 50 to 60 words for the entire book and showcase. We need two definitions for each term. So uh, you guys could maybe do about uh, 15, 15, 15 yeah. 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 A good project manager should also focus on free control. This process allows the manager to evaluate if the goal set are being met. This also allows the manager to compare the output the team produced compared to what was being planned to produce. That was all for forming. Let's have a look at the second category, norming. Norming is when dealing with the way the team operates, whether it be effectively or not. A team could work efficiently if the members prefer collectivism. This means that the members have a preference for a tight-knit social framework. This community means that individuals look out for one another and organisations will actively protect their members' interests. The opposite side of the coin to that is hierarchical control. It does use a lot of formal mechanisms such as rules, policies and authority and reward systems to monitor and influence members' behaviours. In our desk, authoritative is a chain of command. This is the setting stone line of formal channel which communication and responsibility are relayed down all the way from the top of organization to the lowest level of employee. This way team members know exactly who to report to about what. Organizations also assign roles to individuals. It's a great way to utilize someone and make use of their abilities. So what happens when you go through all these categories, forming, norming, 
but you still get a sense of uncertainty. If you have planned correctly, you should be expecting to feel some sort of uncertainty. As ridiculous as it sounds, you should recognize uncertainty in order to address it properly. It's always useful to have a contingency plan ready to go. And this is the stage where you should be planning it. When things do go off track, you might have insufficient funds and run out of resources. For example, a contingency plan is your escape route. It's the alternative course of action for when circumstances change. So it's a response to emergencies, setbacks and unforeseen circumstances. Let's take a look at an organisation who has con a contingency plan. You said you could show up, you could have a contingency plan in place where we all just upload our work to the Google Box so we can all you know, still keep communicate, we all don't miss information. What do you guys think of the importance of chain command? Well companies create a chain of command in order to provide their employees at all levels with the coordinator to whom they can come and ask questions or maybe report an issue. If this system is not available, the company and employees themselves will all suffer. So we had transformational leadership and now we have transactional leadership. What are the difference between these two? Transactional leadership depends on people who work well in a well-direct environment, while transformational leadership often seeks for inspiration and motivation. During any project at all, have you guys ever had to use a crisis management plan? I've never been in that kind of situation, but I just know that it is necessary for an organization to respond to a critical situation. So finally, what is the purpose of organisational control? I think the purpose is to attain the goal of the organisation since controlling is one of the most basic methods of an organisation. And with effective control, an organisation can move forward to its achievement effectively and efficiently. That is all for norming. Let's move on to the third category, storming, which is the stage of team development, in which individual personalities and roles emerge. Have any of you ever faced any problem during this stage? I had experiences with conflicts and arguments with my teammates while we were dividing the work, but with the help of a team leader, everything was resolved. Here are some examples. A bit, a bit of a predicament here. Alex has not been showing up and because of that we've been falling behind on work. To be honest, we are at risk of failing the assignment. Have you guys ever felt like maybe one of your teammates didn't put in the efforts that were expected in the group? Yes, there was actually one teammate of mine who behaved in a certain way. He didn't want to contribute as much as anybody else since he claimed that his assessment brings no benefit. Alex. Alex. Yeah, what's going on, man? Why have you been showing up to the team meetings? I thought you guys were doing it for me. I thought you guys had a handle. That's not how it works, man. You need to contribute to this project. It's about teamwork. We need to cooperate so that we all get a passing grade. Yeah, but I feel like you guys are doing it. I think I'll be alright, man. That's not right. And you should honestly be working together with us. You need to earn the grade as much as we earn it. Alright, fine. I'll come down with you. So do people in a group just upload the work individually or do you have some other method? Not really individually. We will have one person that will be the leader of the work, also be considered the management, while all the others report to them. How about transformational leaders? Did either of you have a transformational leader in your group while doing a project? I did. There was one girl who she would constantly ask everyone of how we have been going with our sections and encourage us to do our best, which I thought that was very nice of for her. Sounds great. So during your working process, do you guys come and ask the manager for help? We would come to the manager to show him the draft of our work to see whether we are doing correctly or not, and if there are any improvements that need to be made. What about rules? Did your group lay down any rules? Of course. Uh, honesty, credibility and consistency in putting values into action is really necessary and important in leadership, so there were strict ethical codes, I guess. Now, of course, self-efficiency, guys. Don't be scared to ask for help, guys. We're all here to support each other. We do have to carry our own weight, so as long as we do to ask for each other, we're fine. That is all for storming. Let's move on to our fourth day, performing. How did your teammates communicate with each other when you guys first become a team? Performing is the stage where all the concepts are put into actions. 
When achieving this stage, the initial step is to create communication channels and by using different methods, the connection amongst the members will be much easier to approach. That's true. Social networking is one of the most common ways of communicating. Or other channels like online documents to keep people on track and through email. Interesting information. Let's have a look at examples to see how it works. We need to talk about communication channels. In fact, we have Messenger, we have Google Docs, we have email. We need to start using these channels to communicate properly. I really think if we do this, we can all speed up our work be much faster. That is all for performing. Now let's move on to the last stage, adjourning. Adjourning is the feedback after the project is done. Did you receive any afterward evaluation or reward in your group? Yeah, of course. After all things have been done, the outcome was submitted to the manager and we will wait for his feedback and see how well we have done so far and mistake we have made. In the meantime, we have our private group evaluation in order to measure each member's individual contribution to the project. We did well in certain parts, but we could do well in other parts. I think that we did well in the uh, yeah, There are a few things that are formatting that I think I'll change next time, if we do it again. And maybe I will ask for more help from you guys, the parts I couldn't do. Uh, what sort of points here? Maybe the title page? Or? Yeah, maybe the title page. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, the teachers seem to think that we did well in content, but um, all my Thank you for joining us today at Management 101. I'd like to thank my special guest for giving us an insight look on how a team works. Hope you found this information useful for your group project. I hope to see you next time.